Jamie Rao Jones joins us today. Hey, Jamie. Hey. It's sad. I mean, you know, we think about those, those stories and, you know, we've heard of Bill Cosby yesterday and yeah. what's uh, come out of that. We, we can think of so many more stories that are in the headlines today. Yeah. Why start this ministry? Uh, well, I started it because it was basically uh, obedience. God mm -hmm. wanted it to happen. And, and, and through, through since 2013, I can see the urgency that he's even put on it. Um, I, I look at guys like Charlie Sheen on that video, and he says, you judge me and you condemn me. And uh, it just breaks me mm -hmm. uh, watching that. But uh, yeah, so that, there's an urgency on people in this industry that I, that I have spent many years in watching them literally dying um, internally, physically, in all sorts of ways. So there's an urgency that there's a need to be met and it's not necessarily being met. So that would be the motive of why to start this. Yeah. It's a, I speak the language, I understand the language because I've been a part of the industry for so long. And uh, it just made sense that God put the two together. So You talk about the redemptive power of Christ through this. And being a Christian, as you said, in this industry, what light can you and have you been able to bring to your friends who you work with day in and day out as you see their lives crumble? Yeah, that's a, it's a, it's a journey, especially with the Christians. It's tough because uh, there's such a low percentage of them actually in the industry. And um, so when you find them, you really want to try to uh, encourage them to make their identity in Christ not in the industry because the industry will consume you. Um, I love the industry, I promote the industry, but it will consume you if, if you're not planted uh, properly. Yeah. I mean, with a 98% divorce rate, um, the suicide rate is through the roof. Um, it, uh, so that, it, it's tough and, and we, we struggle with that uh, to try to make sure the identity is in Jesus. And uh, so to bring the light into it, uh, that's what we do is uh, we empower, we encourage, we equip believers that are in the industry to be that light mm. and to actually have a purpose now. And, to, and it's amazing how I've seen people go just to work their, their, their daily lives in the industry and now they go into that industry and now they're seeing these gospel opportunities within and it's not by saying stuff. Yeah. It's strictly by showing and, and, and performing love that they've never seen before. Yeah. Right. When you talk to some of your friends who are not Christians in the film industry and, uh, and you present Jesus to them, what, what's usually their reaction? The reaction is um, they're always a little, they push back a bit yeah. for sure, um, but it's all in the timing and how you present it. Right, and so uh, I have found that you got to be pretty sensitive, um, and I and and I'm not one because they think right away that we, you're going to judge might, them, exactly, you're, yeah, yeah, judge them, push religion on them, right? And that's not what I'm here to do. God's called me to be an advocate to them, and so I will do what I can in my power to serve and love and help and guide, just to promote healthy marriages in the film industry, promote healthy living uh, in the film industry, um, and and to help guide. I mean, I've, I've ha I had a guy addicted to crystal meth come to me and say, hey, listen, what I believe in doesn't work, mm. but I see what you do works. Can you help me? Mm. And can you help me on the road to recovery? And so now we're on a journey with this uh, guy on a road to recovery. So, And that takes investment on your end to be able yeah. to walk with these guys, walk with these yeah. women through this. You have a ministry where it's kind of underground. It's kind of secretive. Yeah. Tell us about that. Yeah, totally. Uh, so it's uh, we, we found the importance on, on to create a safe place yeah. and because everyone in the industry feels like you want something from them and they're always feeling like there's someone trying to take something from you. Um, and so if we can provide a place where they can come and be a part of a community where they uh, don't feel judged, mm -hmm. everyone's like-minded and, uh, and, and they hear the love of Jesus, uh, that, that is what we're finding is what's working. And they'll keep coming back, and then they'll invite others to come. Uh, so we do that in Vancouver. We meet in an underground. We call it an underground Bible study, mm -hmm. but uh, it's uh, invite only. Uh, no social media. No autographs. No schmoozing. Handing out mm -hmm. business cards. It's just a safe place to come and hang out with other guys, other girls in the industry on all sorts of ends of uh, entertainment as well, not just film. We got stand-up comedians, models, um, uh, UFC fighters, all sorts of uh, people that come 
and they can express their their faith or or they don't express their faith but they come because they don't know why they're there yeah. but they want what we have and they're not there yet but it's a journey and so we're not going to push anything but we're just going to show the love of Jesus. You have some great stories in your book Light in Film. Um, you talk about um, just run-ins that you've had with different friends and just them calling you in desperation but mm -hmm. also just weird situations you find yourself in on yeah. set. Tell us about some of those. Yeah, there's some pretty crazy stories that you would never even think yeah. of. Um, stuff that happens that you don't think people can get away with in real life, but it actually happens. Um, uh, it's it's pretty, uh, yeah, the book's called Light and Film Stories Behind the Glamour. Mm -hmm. So we see all this glamour uh, in Hollywood. Um, and But at the end of the day, behind the scenes, it's not very glamorous. Um, but there is aspects. I don't judge the industry for it because um, I love the industry, but... Uh, yeah, there's some stories um, that are that are weird yeah. and uh, don't make a lot of sense. And uh, but uh, I mean, an example. I mean, I was doing another interview once, and uh, I had to meet a guy, and he had canceled on me. And I've been trying to connect with him for for years, and he canceled on me because he was high on crystal meth, mm. and uh, he was too embarrassed to meet with me mm. because he was high. Um, he doesn't know Jesus, but uh, and I said to him, listen, like. I'll meet you anyways. Yeah. I don't care. That's what friends do, right? And so and that's the point, is to put all that garbage aside mm -hmm. and let's just, let's just uh, you know, have this relationship because I, I'm here to be an advocate to you. Um, yeah. I mean, I got so many stories. That's, if you, you get tell, the book, yeah. You tell of one story that just blew my mind. You're up somewhere north and it's cold and you had a long day, it started late. And, uh, and so it's like, what, two, two three o'clock in the morning. Yeah. And one of the production people say to you, you know, say, says to the cast or all the crew, yeah. you know, guys, you worked so long, so hard. You deserve to get back to the hotel and we'll have an orgy. Yeah. Like. Yeah, straight up. I mean, and so you jump in, and you had planned to go to the hotel initially, and yeah. then this is proposed, and yeah. you say, well, I guess I'm going home. Yeah. And you jump in your car and go home. Yeah, and almost crash about five times because I was so tired. It was, now, is that yeah. normal? Like, is this, like, obviously not the orgy thing, but is it normal that people are just so open about just vulgarity and just no care yeah. about people's moral standards? Is that normal in the film world? What I think it is, to be honest with you, is that they're so overworked and so overtired that when you're in that state of overtiredness, you're weak. You, yeah. just, you just become weaker mentally, right? And then you start, as I've heard some people say when you're like being tired, it's worse than drinking and driving, mm -hmm. like at night when mm -hmm. you're driving. And so it takes people to a place where maybe they are feeling inside, but then it, all of a sudden it just comes out. Uh, in those moments of weakness, and uh, so I wouldn't say and judge things that saying that it happens all the time, but right. it, it it happens obviously. I mean, I know a lady who uh, was in the film industry for seven years, uh, and she was uh, in the catering side of things, but she was also secretly a prostitute mm. to film industry people at the same time. And now today, she knows Jesus, and, and when actually when she met me, she looked at me, and she said, "Are you the film guy?" And I said, yeah, this was in church. Mm -hmm. Are you the film guy? And, and I said, yeah. And she, she looked at me and started crying. Mm -hmm. And she's like, where were you 15 years ago? And, uh, and then went on to tell me her story, you know? And so now she serves on our leadership team because wow. you know, now she, she's an outlet to help. She wants to help people that are in this business that were like she was, yeah. right? Yeah, so there's hope. Mm -hmm. You know, I think of yourself, I think of Judah Smith. These are, mm -hmm. you know, there are so many more pastors that are saying, you know, we need to be love. We need to be light yeah. in these dark places. You know, we think of uh, the, the kind of the, the roller coaster that Justin Bieber has been on. We look at the Kardashians. We see mm -hmm. all of these people on television and it is easy to yeah. judge. Oh, yeah. It e is easy to wag our finger and say, you know, they don't know Jesus. But yeah. you're right. I mean, I think what you are doing, what Judah's doing is trying to bring light to these places and say instead of judging we need to love exactly we need to embrace yeah. and so what is something that you would say to people at home as we're watching these shows and we're saying oh that's just another Hollywood person we mm. you know we think of divorces as you said the, the divorce rate is so high how can we continue to be that love mm. we're not there with with you or with yeah. these stars every single day yeah. but we can be agents of change we can totally. remember that redemptive quality that Jesus yeah. gave to us that grace exactly. that he showed to us yeah 
exactly, 100%. And that's just it, like not to judge what's going on because they don't know better, yeah. right? And if they don't know better, then you don't, we don't have a right to judge, you know? And uh, it's like the woman caught in adultery, right? Who's gonna throw the first stone, you know? And uh, uh, that's what an advocate is to be. And uh, if, if, if people at home can't physically do it, then, then they can also support us mm -hmm. so that we can release people to do it and uh, to, to be there for them. Um, the Bible says it's harder for a rich man to enter the kingdom. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's a lot of money to be made in this business. And, uh, and uh, I, I just think we, we've, uh, we've, mis we've missed it a bit on, on seeing them and judging for what they've done and the lyrics people sing and the movies that they've, they've done. Um, but we have people placed in movie sets. That's the important thing. Like, like even in the movie Fifty Shades of Grey, we have a guy that's on set showing the love of Jesus on that movie. Hmm. Now, are we going to judge him for being on that movie? Well, no, he's not doing anything wrong on the film. He's not doing anything wrong. Are we going to judge him because that's not his identity. His identity is not Fifty Shades of Grey. His identity is Jesus, but he's there talking with the lead actress, showing love in ways that she's never seen before and not giving her guilt trips for doing what she's doing, but build a relationship so that, that maybe that day will come when she asks about Jesus, right? Mm. So we need to look past that and see Jesus in the light of everything. Yeah. You have a website, Jamie, where people can find out more about you. What's that website? Uh, lightandfilm.org. Dot org. Yeah. And I love what you say. You say that your three goals for this ministry is to build relationships, encourage Christians in the industry, and have monthly ga gatherings. Yeah. So you want to make this a regular thing. You want to be mm -hmm. uh, the best example of Jesus that you can be yeah. in that. Yeah, we actually do meet bi-weekly, every two weeks in downtown Vancouver. And then we plan to expand to Toronto and Montreal as part of the vision. Well, God bless you, yeah. Jamie, in that work. I mean, I, I know it's a hard mission field, but it's one that needs people that are focused on uh, focused on Jesus and focused on redemptive grace, uh, all the things that Jesus showed to us. So thank yeah. you again. Thank you. Thanks so much.